Take us home, driver. My manservant will give you directions. Witness the merciless taunting of the helpless mouse. I suppose the feline instinct is still strong within 73, but then again, it could be a human trait. I say, excuse me, uh, 73? Oh, it's no good. He's completely engrossed. It's covered in little holes placed in a precise pattern. Maybe if I were to make a few new holes, I could sabotage their machine. Here, Kitty Kitty, look, a nice, expensive, fragile piece of paper. Oh, my goodness! I must apologize. I don't know what came over me. Don't worry. You're doing what comes naturally to you as a cat. Just as I planned. Where to, Governor? The Royal Scientific Institute, Kensington. She looks like a very fashionable lady. Pompous old academics. What would they know about anything? I... I don't understand. Computers can't go wrong. <laughs> Whoopee! I told you so, I told you so. Na 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 na. Hands up all those whose expensive scientific invention is still in one piece. I don't know what you did, young man, but it showed those stuck-up academical snobs for the fools they are. At last! Someone who really believes in my theories. Absolutely. I'm keen to get involved in your experiments. Well then, you can be my assistant on my trip to the moon. I don't need anyone from the Institute. The only qualifications needed are enthusiasm and bravery. You're obviously enthusiastic. That only leaves one question. Are you man enough for the job, my boy? Uh, how dangerous is it likely to be? Hmm, let's see. I need someone to go out of my rocket to explore the surface of the moon. Nobody knows for sure what's up there. There could be monsters terrifying beyond your imagination. Ah, I see. Have you got room for one more? I'm sure we could squeeze another person in. Excellent. I'll bring my manservant. If there's anything dangerous up there, he'll sort it out. Or die trying. After all, that's what I pay him for. Capital idea. Well, come to my house in Harrow later on today and we'll be off. If they wouldn't reason with the professor, they certainly won't talk to me. How 
unfortunate that the infant is so quiet. She looks like a very fashionable lady. To Governor Paddo That's Professor Tipple, one of London's more eccentric inventors. Hello, Professor. I'm here, as requested. Good, good. I'm nearly ready to go. I just need a few more things for our trip. Excellent. I'll wait for you. Is there a public house nearby where I could get a drink? No time for that, young man. You volunteered to be my assistant, so you've got to help me prepare for this momentous journey. Oh, very well, then. What do you want? Let's see. Fetch me some vitriol. There should be some in my laboratory somewhere. Oh, and I've misplaced the remote controller for my automaton. See if you can find it. There's a good chap. What on earth is an automaton? Ah, glad you asked, my boy. It's one of my inventions. Oh, yes, a steam-driven machine that will help us to perform dangerous and unpleasant tasks from a safe distance. Can't you just use a manservant like everyone else? Good Lord, no. Servants are much too fragile. They're always breaking or bursting or going splat. My machine is far stronger and also far more versatile. I call it Robert. I'd give you a demonstration, but it's already stowed in the rocket. So you want the vitriol? And the remote control? Yes, please, if you don't mind, young man. Oh, there's one other thing. I haven't had time to have any lunch, so be a good chap and get me something to eat. I have a bit of a hankering for a ploughman's lunch today. What did your last servant die of? Explosive decompression. Dreadful affair. Sir, I am a gentleman, not a gentleman's gentleman. I do not fetch lunch. You volunteered to be my assistant. That's what you must be. So you want a ploughman's lunch as well? That would be lovely. Oh, I'm so excited! I'm going to the moon! Vitriol. That's strong acid and very dangerous. It will eat just about anything. Rather like moss up, actually. I don't want to risk burning away my carefully cultivated nostril hair. Now that really would rot my insides. I better be careful with this stuff. It could burn my hand off. I'm glad I'm not carrying acid around in my trouser pocket, to tell the truth. My fiancé would never accept me if I were anything less than a complete gentleman. Isn't it nice to be this far out of London? I don't know, sir. It smells funny. Yes, it's called fresh air, Mossop. I have nothing more to say to you. Righty up, sir. That must be something the professor is working on. I've never seen a contraption like that before. I'm not sure I know what I'm doing with this contraption. I'm not about to start taking the professor's inventions apart. I don't know exactly how it works. But I'm sure I'll be the first person on my street to have one. It has guidance controls on it, as if it steers something.
You found it! Splendid, splendid. You better keep hold of it for the time being. I don't want to lose it again. I can be quite absent-minded at times, you know. Oh, super! You got it. Do me a favour and hang on to it for me. If I take it now, I'll only lose it. I assume that Professor Tipple lives in there. Where to, Governor? The Crab and Sailor Public House in Whitechapel. Good day, Barman. What's it to be then, sir? I'd like one of your plowman's lunches, please, good Barman. Oh, would you now? A plowman's lunch? That's for your working men. And I can see by your manner that you're a toff. You've never done an honest day's work in your life. How dare you come in here and pretend that you're a working man? You want a plowman's lunch? Go and plow a field. I'm not serving you. On your penny farthing, mate. I am a working man. And what makes you think that? My great-grandfather lifted some boxes once. That hardly counts as work, does he? I've told you before, I'll only serve me plowman's lunches to real working men. I am a working man. And what makes you think that? I used to work, then I retired on my earnings. A likely story. I've told you before, I'll only serve me plowman's lunches to real working men. I am a working man. And what makes you think that? I work hard at being a gentleman. And I'm working hard at not punching your lights out. I've told you before, I'll only serve me plowman's lunches to real working men. I am a working man. And what makes you think that? But listen to the way that I talk. Lord, uh, love a duck. Yes, we have no bananas. Uh, apples and pears, neither mother brown. How are you, me old cock sparrow? That's the worst attempt at a cockney accent I ever heard. I've told you before, I'll only serve me plowman's lunches to real working men. I am a working man. And what makes you think that? I pick fights. Your mother was a gin-addled, ugly alcoholic, haggard, toothless old harlot who couldn't read or write. Just cause you knew me mum doesn't mean you're working class, mate. I've told you before, I'll only serve me plowman's lunches to real working men. I am a working man. And what makes you think that? I don't really know. I thought as much. You haven't got a clue what a real working man is. OK, what is he then? Well, I'm in the liquor business. And I can always tell a man's character by what he drinks. What does a real man drink then? Real men drink something that is feared throughout civilization. The scourge of sanity, the destroyer of livers, the breaker of wheels. Real men? Ha! They quaff a drink so utterly evil that it devours them even as they devour it. Real men drink scrumpy. Cider? Is that all? It's not cider. It might be made from apples, but the contaminants that go into each glass make each mouthful a near suicidal undertaking. It rocks your teeth, your guts and your brain. Ever never smiled upon this sour, joyless pint of miserable corruption, sir. It's the devil's own handiwork, his finest handiwork. No other drink comes close. Uh, well, I'll have a pint of scrumpy then, please. Straight glass. If it's the only way to prove to you that I am a working man, that I have a legitimate right to eat a plowman's lunch, then by golly, I'll do it. Here you go then, sir. One pint of scrumpy, and may the Lord have mercy on your soul. I believe this week's special contaminant is a dead sheep's carcass. That's the concoction I'm supposed to be drinking. to drink this to prove I'm a working man. Yet another good reason to remain one of the idle rich, in my opinion. Ah, 
Uh, well, I believe in sharing, so... Mossop, care to try some? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No delegation. The working man drinks his own drink. Oh, well. Uh, bottoms up. my lunch now, wouldn't you say? That I would, sir. I take my hat off to you. You are definitely a real working man. Don't say it, Mossop. It's my ploughman's lunch, and by golly did I earn it. <laughs> <laughs> 